day, March 24th, 2015, at 601. If we can all rise for an invocation. <coughs> Mr. Gonzalez, can you lead us in an invocation? Let's bow our heads. Uh, Lord, we come before you on this meeting and uh, give us the wisdom and the knowledge and uh, direction to make the right decisions for the city of San Juan. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Y'all may be seated. Under public comments, we have Mr. Ramirez Trevino. Can you come forward, please? A proclamation commemorating Soledad Marquez's 100th birthday. We have one of her sons, correct? Yes. Can you come forward, sir? It's always a pleasure to take the time to recognize some of our residents who have been with us and seen our city grow and be a part of our community for such a time. And so it is a great pleasure that I, uh, I and myself with the commission uh, provide this proclamation. <coughs> and it reads as such. This is a proclamation for Soledad Marquez. One hundred, over 100 years ago, much to the of Telesforo y Juanita de la Cruz, Soledad Marquez was born on April the 2nd of 1915. And with the encouragement of her spouse, Aldelgundo Marquez, who is deceased, four children, Isidoro, Armando, Amador, Andy, and Theodora Marquez, and Theodora Marquez, 10 grandchildren and 16 great grandchildren. So that Marquez has been a powerful influence for good in our community. And whereas during her long and productive lifetime, she has earned the respect and affection of people from all walks of life and all ages because of her knowledge, experience, and wisdom and community spirit. And where this very personable young woman of exceptional abilities in celebrating her 100th birthday on April the 2nd, 2015, her accomplishments and achievements of Soledad Marquez deserve recognition and, rec and commendation. Whereas Soledad Marquez will be honored by friends and relatives on the occasion of her birthday on April the 2nd of 2015. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Mayor San Juanita Sanchez, as a power vested in me as Mayor of the City of San Juan, along with the Mayor Pro Tem Armando Garza, Commissioners Mario Garza, uh, Jesse Ramirez and Heriberto Suarez hereby issue this proclamation to Soledad Marquez on March 24th, 2015. Thank you for being here with us. And you should tell us just a little bit about the background. If you can go back to the microphone so we can hear that and share that. My mother goes back uh, quite a bit. Uh, my grandfather died, I mean, I was born in the Mercedes area in 1880s. And uh, as far as we come back, uh, we, his, his father was born here also in South Texas. We think around 1840, right before the Civil War. So at this time, you know, mom remembers my grandmother passed away in 1988 at the age of 102. And she was also born here. in the old, I think they all call it Tres Cheques which was basically levees. That's what it was. There was no such towns. 
and she remembers uh, quite a bit back, that far back in the turn of the century, and she would tell us stories. She would tell us stories about gunboats coming up the river, you know, and, and bandits coming across the border and raiding the farms for cattle and whatever things. I mean, you know, the Mexican Revolution was an impact. She remembers it quite clearly. My grandfather had a printing company in Mercedes at the turn of the century, but he also had a printing company in Saltillo, Coahuila. And in the summertime, it got too hot here, so he would take the family, my mother and her brothers, by Pullman train and go all the way to Saltillo. Well, in 1815, when mother was, uh, grandmother was pregnant, my mother, Villa, entered Saltillo. And since grandpa was not a Villista, he was going to hang him. So he, they entered the house, that, uh, the hacienda at the time, which is now, uh, the house is still there in the family, and it's now in the, uh, basically in the center of town, el, uh, I think it's in front, al Universidad Autónoma de Coahuila. And the house is huge, uh, 15 foot walls, five foot thick walls. And uh, grandma hit grandpa in the water well inside the, the, the compound. And at nightfall, uh, they dressed him as a woman and, put, and took him secretly to the, to the train station in Saltillo and put him on the train back to Reynosa so he can come across back uh, to Texas. And uh, later on, grandma and the rest of her, you know, she was pregnant with my mother and was able to get back into South Texas from Mexico. And grandpa never went back because of that, because uh, Lee at the time was in power and couldn't. Otherwise, he, he, was, he had death sentence. So grandpa would never, never went back to Mexico, but the house is still there. And I understand from the family, the house was acquired probably around 1830 in Saltillo, Coahuila. And uh, he had properties all over here in South Texas. Grandma would tell me that they took them two days to go from Mercedes uh, to, uh, which is now Raymondville, to see property there by wagon. At, I mean, that, that took two days. There were no roads. We have pictures of downtown San Juan, Alamo, all this area where there was no roads. It was basically caliche dirt so, and wagons. Uh, Grandpa in 1917 had one of the first Model T's in the valley. And I have a picture of my mother sitting with Grandpa and that Model T. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite a bit of story. Uh, the family is, Grandma had uh, eight sisters, uh, 11 sisters and eight brothers. So we're related to a lot of people here. <laughs> I mean, we're all over the place. And sadly to say, the only time we get together is at funerals. Sure. And, and Grandma, my mother is the last of that generation. And she remembers everything. Beautiful. She, ha she can tell you names of people she met in 1920, you know. In 1990, and well, get this, in World War II, she was already in her uh, uh, late 20s when World War II broke out. She remembers the blackouts. She remembers going dancing at the old Army Air Base in Harlingen when Glenn Miller was there. And we have pictures of her dancing. Todos juntan una troca here, and all the girls would go dancing. Mr. Marquez, you're, you're writing a book. You're putting this history down. Yes, we, we, we're writing. My daughter is, is, uh, has a master's degree in literature. And she's putting the book together. Fantastic. But once we get it, and then we'll, I'll be more than happy to share it. With well, you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. What a great thank story. You. Thank and you very much. Congratulations to you and your family. Thank you. I'd like to go ahead and present this with you. We can come down and take a picture that we can present that. Thank The next item on the agenda is another proclamation for the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service. And it reads as, as such. Every year they, um, take, we take an opportunity through the volunteerism to recognize how many people throughout our communities volunteer <coughs> to do numerous things to, within our community. And many of those, um, we have folks here within our community that serve voluntarily. And so um, this is the, the month of coming up that we take that opportunity to recognize and thank those um, that volunteer within our communities. 
and it reads as this, is a Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service, where a service to others is a hallmark of the American character and centered to how we meet our challenges, and where the nation's mayors are increasingly turning to national service and volunteerism as a cost-effective strategy to meet the city needs, and where AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and counties from education students for the jobs of the 21st century and supporting national service participants increase the impact of the organization they serve with both through their direct service and by recruiting and managing millions of additional volunteers. National service represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solution and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return of taxpayer dollars and whereas the national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, patriotism by making an intensive commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. And whereas the Corporation for National Community Service shares a priority with mayors nationwide to engage uh, citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with the National League of Cities, City of Service, and mayors across the county to recognize the impact of the service of mayors of recognition for nation, nation, nation service on April 7, 2015. Now, therefore, I, San Juanita Sanchez, Mayor of the City of San Juan, along with the Mayor Pro Tem Armando Garza, Mario Garza, uh, Jesse Ramirez, and commissioners. Uh, who are commissioners in Herberto Garza, here proclaim April the 7th of 2015 as National Service Recognition Day for the city of San Juan, Texas. Is there anyone here from the organization present? Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. So, on behalf of Hidalgo County, the Retired Senior Volunteers Program, I want to thank you for putting this item on the agenda. Um, accompanying me is uh, our Vice Chair of our <coughs> RSVP Advisory Council, Mr. Roen de Leon. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for being here and also for the uh, continued work that you do in bringing um, that type of uh, volunteerism to all our communities. So I'd like to present you with a proclamation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is a presentation <coughs> and update on the road improvements of, in conjunction with Hidalgo County Precinct 2. Uh, Chief Gonzalez. Yeah, Mayor Commissioners, uh, back on the February 17th, uh, we got an update on the Precinct 2 uh, projects on uh, Cesar Chavez Moor Road, which has been completed already. They've been invoiced already in the cities in the process of processing those payments for Precinct 2. Uh, Sioux Road, Eldora, and Olana. Uh, today we got another uh, update on those projects. Uh, the only update that we have right now is the fact that, uh, and there's a letter you know, in, in front of you as well, but uh, due, due to the transition and transfer of some of the personnel, uh, some of the projects were, uh, were, uh, would, uh, were uh, placed back about 30 days, so uh, that's the only thing that uh, has changed. Uh, we know that, I know we have a, 
MOU with uh, Precinct 2, and uh, I've spoken to the commissioner, and everything is is, uh, is moving forward with uh, what be, what's being presented. So uh, the only update is that, uh, the changes there, and uh, personnel changes in that department that, that uh, they move those dates uh, uh, about 30 days uh, uh, later than, than they projected to be completed. So uh, also, I don't know if Brian <coughs> has something to mention on that, Wilbur. Uh, we're, we're just looking at the letters that was written, and like the chief said, February 17th, and it looks like the dates have just moved about a month. Can you tell us, re tell us now what the dates are and uh, what they mean and what would the citizens be able to see as uh, work starting on those particular on the, roads? On the Sioux Road project, the original date was for to finish the document, bid documents to, to go out for bids was March 6th, with construction to start mid-June. That's been moved back to March 27th. Construction will probably uh, be mid-July. Nolana would be it originally was April the 3rd, construction mid-June mid to July. It's been moved back to April, 3rd, April 30th for bid documents. So the the construction will probably be in August. El Dora, which is the one that's real far behind, is uh, was ready. It was supposed to be ready on May 1st. Now they moved it back to June 5th. So the the construction will be probably in uh, either August or September. And I'm just projecting their dates that uh, that Mrs. E and that given. would be and the dates that you're giving us of June 5th or August or September would be actual construction work to begin, is that correct? Yes. And once it's begun, um, Mr. Cruz, what kind of time frame are we looking at for completion and something um, like that? Well, the, they're in Dora and Sioux Road, actually they're all pretty long streets. I, I'm not sure exactly what they have in the, it, we'd have to look at the documents, see what they're giving them to the contractor. I'm assuming 30, 60 days each, each road, uh, but they probably, I'm not sure how they're going to do it. They're going to go for three contracts or one contract. I'm, I'm not sure what he said. Uh, do you remember? I, it's my. It's uh, each one will be bid out separately. separately. Okay. So then they go conjunction. They could be done at the same time. Or okay. Overlap. Okay. And I think it's uh, important. I know there's there's been confusions. I've had some phone calls, and I know that the uh, commissioner met with uh, some people out in that area, as did the mayor pro tem, and. Um, you know, in the discussions, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get this meeting that uh, I tried to set up, I guess it was last week, and for lack of quorum, uh, we were not able to have that. I'd like to know when we're resetting this, we can have an open discussion with our members of our community uh, to understand what uh, he's proposing, uh, the kind of relief that we can get with the uh, monies that we currently are looking at and we're discussing. And because we are discussing, what, what are you proposing as a time to have this meeting? We do plan to have uh, a meeting, hopefully the first week or second week of April, and uh, do a workshop so we can discuss this, uh, these projects and uh, any other projects that the Mayor Commission would like to discuss. So we are in contact with a Precinct 2 Commissioner as well to make sure that he's available for the workshops, and also our financial advisor as well. If uh, the mayor just mentioned that the meeting wasn't scheduled for lack of a quorum, but when I had talked to you, you said it wasn't scheduled because our financial advisor was not prepared to make a report. Uh, it was a combination of uh, several things, and uh, you know, uh, uh, the city secretary did mention the fact that there was uh, no quorum also as well, and the financial advisor did ask for us to, you know, withheld from having the meeting until he looked at all the the documents that uh, were presented to him to us, and I think that, that was that was granted. Uh, we did inform the staff on Precinct 2 Commissioner's Office, uh, but uh, we, we apologized based on the letter that he wrote that uh, maybe it was not, you know, uh, the message was not uh, gone to him, but his staff was informed that uh, we were not going to have a meeting. I know that uh, there was publications as well that we were supposed to have a meeting on Tuesday, so we did inform also those media release uh, entities to make sure that uh, the public was aware that there was not going to be meetings. And we did post it as well, I believe, in our website to make sure that uh, there was no meaning as well. So uh, just want to clarify on that. I think as we go forward, I like that uh, as early as tomorrow to circulate the, some dates for the upcoming based on what our financial, uh, Mr. Vela, is uh, ready to move forward as well and circulate some dates so we can make a decision and, and set that workshop. Um, 
sooner than not. I would appreciate that. We do. Thank you. Under next item on the agenda, presentation and update on the water plant number two. Mr. Cruz. Mary Commissioners, uh, you have your, the memo from, for, this, uh, for this meeting. I also included some pictures that, that should have been in your package of, of some of the construction that's been going on out there. The, the, just going over real quick, uh, we are at about 24% complete on pay, pay requests. They're a little bit further along, like 35% on the construction. The, the next meeting if, on the project schedule will be April the 10th at 10 a.m. That's with the Water Development Board. And uh, we do, we are on schedule. We have 250 days uh, to complete the project. Work update, the electrical subcontractor continues to install the duct banks and electrical manholes. They're about 42% complete and the clericones have been delivered. You all have seen them, they're, all, they're already going up. Both of them are already going up. The submittals are all up to date. The underground the projected work is continually electrical. The filter foundation work needs to be, uh, needs to be poured because the, the filters will be coming in in about 30 days. So the foundations need to be poured on that one. The filter security wall has to go up before the foundation is poured for the filters. And uh, if you look at the picture, there is, the block is there. <laughs> they took a picture of the trailer where it's coming in. So the, the delivery of the filters and clear well is projected to be by mid-April. So uh, things are starting to move a lot quicker because the contractor that's doing the, all the, the steel is, uh, they're from out of town, so they come to work and to work every day. Is Mr. Guerra here? No, no. I didn't see him. Okay. And if you have any questions on, about the pictures, these are the included in the monthly meetings and I just, I just included them this time in there. And so you're satisfied at this point as you're, you're discussing that uh, communication is doing well, we're not having any more issues? Uh, no, construction is starting to, it actually, for the last two months, it's really picked up. Things are starting to move. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Cruz? So, so what you're saying, Mr. Cruz, we're pretty much up to par? Yes. Okay. Yes. It, it's, uh, it's on schedule. Okay. Everything's on schedule. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Under E, presentation of departmental reports, uh, Chief Gonzalez. Yes, Mayor, Commissioner. There's a copy of the department reports uh, from the... Someone Memorial Library, you all have any questions on that? Also from uh, uh, Streets and Sanitation Department. I do wanna reflect something on the Sanitation Department that uh, uh, we have had a lot of many calls from our citizens and uh, it is understandably right so that they're concerned about a lot of the potholes out in the city. Uh, we are uh, trying to meet those needs and our staff is, uh, my staff is, we have uh, several crews out there we did some work on South San Antonio uh, Street, and we're doing some work also on, obviously, uh, El Dora and Subo are very in bad condition, but uh, I know that our citizens are, you know, are very much concerned about when those projects are gonna, you know, uh, get going. Uh, the only thing we can do right now is um, ease their, uh, their, their anger, you know, as I can say, and uh, hopefully uh, with, our, with our efforts on a daily basis, we're trying to fill those potholes with, with gravel, with uh, millions and, and anything we can. And uh, we are working very hard. Our staff is working very hard. Uh, obviously the rains continue to hamper a lot of our efforts and about, but I just wanted to share with the Mayor and Commission that we are uh, 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 doing the best we can with, uh, with, the, with the resources we have. And uh, our, men in, you know, our men out in the department are, are going out there and, and um, trying to fix some of the streets so I just wanted to. Chief, on the work that was done um, on San Antonio, um, did, did we have, did we borrow, Mike, did we borrow equipment for that? <coughs> or how was that work done? Now, I know precinct two uh, 
provided some millions. How are we doing on that? And do we need more? Well, I, I recommend you, you uh, contact the precinct office and, and make a request uh, for additional millions because, unfortunately, uh, the, the road problems that we're having are not unique to San Juan, and so there's a high demand for that. But um, I know that commissioners trying to pretty much divide up our apportionment of millions uh, so that everybody will have uh, some, and so... Um, so let's let's uh, let's contact the office tomorrow and see what we can uh, make sure that we we have. Uh, they're in high demand. They're in high demand. <laughs> the other thing, the other thing that I recent that recently came to my attention as well is that. All of, uh, we call them aprons, but all of the transitions or aprons off of state roads are also to be maintained by TxDOT. Um, and so what I'd like to also recommend uh, for consideration, and I'm not sure if that would come from, from yourself or from Chief Gonzalez, but to reach out to um, the engineer that's assigned to San Juan, uh, Mr. Rene Garza, and talk to him about uh, particularly um, the um, Business 83 transitions onto city roads. Uh, some of those are, are starting to, to really get beat up. I know, for example, um, the one on uh, Nebraska and Business 83 uh, is, is, is starting to get really, really bad. And the water ponds there regularly. It's my understanding that, that they are supposed to maintain, um, and, and I don't know the exact distance, but they're supposed to maintain, I believe, you know, 10, 15 feet from the intersection in. And so if that's the case, then that's maybe some work that they can do, and that's something that maybe you won't have to do um, as well. Uh, and, but, but we could look at other, you know, on 495, if there's any mm -hmm. transitions onto city roads, then, then let's address those. And, and the same for Stewart um, and any of our other uh, state roads, like the ones that come in off of, uh, onto rather, Olongoria. Gonzalez made a comment that we are running out of monies for the asphalt. I'd like to hear at the next meeting what the proposal is because we're only at March. We still have the rain season in the summer should there be uh, disturbances in the Gulf. I'd like to know what we're doing and how we're going to plan so that we have uh, the reserves to get us through the rest of the year as we're waiting on some of these projects to take place. And then um, I know that there were some other areas in our city and smaller community uh, residential streets that we use the roller and it really helps. If we're doing the work, uh, I like to do the work only on the city side, not the county side, concentrate on the city. And the other thing would be that if we're doing those, especially in those areas that have the larger potholes, that we'd be using a roller as well because that makes it very difficult even in the, in the sense of going through the roads so if you've used it and we can find a way to incorporate it into some of these areas that really need it, uh, especially, and also in, in the corner, like for example, you, I think you all used it, uh, First Street and Standard. That continually gets uh, moved around. So I think that it, I'd like to, one, get a plan about what we're gonna do, or be that we're looking at capital expenditures and moving that around so that we're not in a shortage. And then also that it, once we do approach some of these others that we're going to be filling, that we provide that roller as well. some uh, training from the guys like in FAR that you guys can go one afternoon or you know
Commissioner, also just to uh, add to it, uh, yes, uh, we are working on the budget because we're going to need more asphalt. And uh, I think that this equipment that was approved by the Mayor Commission uh, this fiscal year is, is essential because before we used to do it uh, by hand. So now we have this equipment available and, and, and uh, we move a lot quicker and faster. So we're still looking at other equipment that uh, Mr. Gonzalez have suggested that will help us you know, expedite some of these uh, work orders. So I think it's important that, uh, that we continue to do that and uh, concentrate on those uh, major potholes. Uh, we're getting potholes in places that we never had potholes before. So uh, those streets that uh, the rain actually, you know, uh, now went into those areas. And so we're trying to uh, meet the needs of the community. But I think that, uh, you know, our budgets are constrained. But, you know, having, uh, having a look at, at, at the needs of it, we will meet the needs as we move forward. Very good. I also like to look at, look at the sealants that we've used in other roads. Uh, we went and we... Uh, I believe we, we leased out one, uh, one year, and it holds up very well. We have some very good streets that are starting to get some, some cracks, and within time, we're gonna be in the same condition as so many others. I'd like you to take a look at that and, and bring back what are the possibilities of uh, doing that as part of our, try to get a maintenance plan where we don't let roads begin to uh, pick up the water and end up having to become potholes in the real near future. Like Chief was saying, we're seeing them where we never saw them before. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, also, uh, I know that the city of uh, McAllen and the city of Far are using a new method called the Cutler method to repair roads. Are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. There's a special machine that's being, and it's leased out from the manufacturer. And what it is, is instead of like doing potholes, they're actually, um, they're resurfacing uh, whole sections and they're finding that that lasts significantly longer than a pothole repair. The only thing I'm not aware of is, is the cost, which obviously would be important. Um, and maybe you can reach out to Mr. Roy Garcia at the City of Far and, and ask him if we can give you some information. As we look for potential solutions, uh, not only for our immediate needs, but for long-term needs, if, if we can repair a road and it lasts five years, uh, as opposed to it lasts till the next rain season, I think that'll be a, a, an overall cost savings to the city in the long, in the long run. They also mentioned something about they're using uh, their uh, their blacktop is stone uh, as opposed to river rock. Uh, it makes instead of coal mix. Yeah. The cost is significantly higher. Great. Thank Mike, you, Mr. What's Mike? Uh, what's the current budget on the asphalt? That you are, we allocated this year. Getting those information to us so we can look at uh, mm -hmm. what's something else that we can do alternatively. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Under uh, ordinances, A, consider adopting the first reading of the ordinance regulating the establishment of sexually oriented businesses within San Juan city limits. Mr. Cervantes. City Commission, good evening. Because the city of San Juan does not have an adopted sexually oriented business ordinance, the city is very vulnerable to that those type of businesses could locate within the city limits in the future. If the city res receives building plans to open that type of a business in a commercially zoned property that is already subdivided, it will be difficult for staff to hold off on the issuance of the permit. If that permit is placed on hold, the city risks ex expensive <coughs> litigation that we're likely to lose because we do not have an ordinance uh, to protect us. The attached ordinance places extensive background requ requirements on applicants 
and requires that any proposed sexually oriented business must not be within 2,000 feet of a church, a public or private elementary school or secondary school, a boundary of any residential district that has an existing dwelling unit, a public park, within the property line of a lot of record devoted to residential use, child, child care facility, or within 2,000 feet of any building in which alcoholic beverages are offered for sale. This ordinance is modeled after an ordinance that we received from the Texas Municipal League. It's a little bit more restrictive than what they sent us in, in the ordinance that we received from Austin. It, uh, it calls for 1,500 feet, and in our own ordinance, we, <coughs> we increased it to 2,000 uh, linear feet. So this uh, ordinance would really protect the city in case of a business like that wants to come into the city. So this ordinance is one that's already in, it's a boilerplate <coughs> language that's already in use. Exactly, a lot of cities have used this ordinance. And I saw that it's been tested a few times yes. with some case law. Yes. And it's with, withhold. We got it from the, from the legal department in uh, TML. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Vasquez and I met uh, and we, uh, we made some uh, changes, some, uh, some uh, small changes. We increased the, the, the uh, feet from 1,500 to 2,000. Um, it's a very good ordinance, and it should really protect us in case something like that wants to come into the city. Are there any questions? If not, is there a motion for approval? <coughs> so moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, state aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Cervantes. Yeah. Under contractual resolutions, A, consider an and approve an interlocal agreement between the city of San Juan, <coughs> Texas A&M University, Kingsville for representation, appointment to the Lower Rio Grande Valley Sports Complex Environmental Council, and appoint a representative from the city to the council, to the council and to alternate, and, and an alternate representative to the council. Mr. Ponce. Mayor Ponce, members of the commission. Um, we've been asked to represent, uh, to serve on this council, and uh, today we have with us uh, Augusto, uh, Augusto Sanchez, from uh, Texas A&M University, Kingsville, and he's gonna give us uh, some, some background uh, of, the, of the council and how it's in conjunction with the uh, Stormwater Task Force. Very good. Mr. Sanchez. Uh, Mayor, Commissioners, good evening. Good evening. Um, this organization, it's, uh, it's pretty much a uh, spin-off of the Stormwater Task Force that the city of San Juan is already a member of. So, um, uh, un unlike the, the Stormwater Task Force, this organization will not require a, a, an annual fee or anything like that. This uh, uh, interlocal agreement is more of a memorandum of, of understanding, and it's a document to have an, an, uh, an, uh, uh, an individual officially appointed to be uh, uh, on board with this, with this organization. Uh, the idea um, uh, began uh, after uh, we submitted for the th third grant of the <coughs> low-impact development program that we already have. Uh, we, uh, actually, the sponsor, TCQ, noticed that uh, a lot of these uh, new uh, some water uh, strategies that we're implementing here in the Valley are, are taking place in, in sport complexes or uh, city assets that are administered by uh, parks and recreations in different cities. So they, they decided to, they proposed us the idea to form this organization and they offer funding for that. So there's, there's already um, nearly $30,000 that are uh, uh, allocated for, for the startup, startup of uh, this organization. And uh, it's uh, just like the task force, we, we, want, we want this organization to be a network and a resource for the city, uh, like partner, partnering up with uh, other uh, ca counties and uh, other cities, you know, changing experiences. Uh, of course, uh, we're gonna uh, be talking about you know, different funding opportunities to um, increase the value of uh, the city assets when it comes to uh, parks and recreations. And, um, and also, uh, we decided to keep the name generic. So um, the thing is that this grant is dedicated uh, only for some water-related uh, issues, but the, the, na the name of the organization is generic, generic enough so that we could go after for different kind of funding as long as it's environmentally uh, friendly, is the that, project. Is that the key difference between the Stormwater Task Force and this new organization that's being formed? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that, so I guess my question was gonna be more towards the, uh, the, the purpose of the organization is similar in nature or exact? It's similar in nature, well, in, in, in essence, it's uh, to, have, to have a, a uh, 
In essence, it's similar since uh, we want we want to keep uh, growing a network among the municipalities in the in, in the in the valley. Uh, now, it's it, this is only dedicated for some water some water. I mean, uh, sport complexes and uh, parks and recreations uh, facilities. Um, there was one point. There there was also one point that I wanted to to mention. Oh well, yes. Uh, we can apply to different kind of grants. Like uh, we, we, I just uh, saw a a, a, a a request for grants proposals from the Department of Energy to uh, include like solar panels for lighting. And in case I know that, uh, for instance, restrooms in, in city parks are could be a security issue. Uh, so lighting is of the essence. So of these grants, sense. you're able to apply as an organization for a regional use, or every individual city gets an opportunity and to request. It's, I, at this point, we're, uh, it's going to be depending on the size of the of, of the grant, of how many. If it's a, a, a very large grant, we would like to to the city to take the lead on the grant, since uh, all the, the the indirect cost that the university charges is is quite onerous. So we we don't want to uh, dedicate money in indirect costs and you know more in the more in the project. So for for projects like of a regional nature, yes, uh, then A uh, M Kings will take the lead, like in the like in the other other uh, grants that we have, and uh, we'll have a, a, a subcontract uh, with the city to implement uh, part of the projects within the city limits. I see. As as I uh, consider. Uh, the city's representative um, to this, should we be considering, and, and just your opinion, um, should we be considering someone more on, for example, the Parks and Rec side like Mr. Ponce, or should we be considering somebody, for example, like Mr. Mike Gonzalez? Mike, uh, don't you currently serve on the Stormwater Task, Task Force? Or, oh, okay, or Javier, right. Um, I mean, I just, I guess, who would be more? Okay, great. Member and both of us will go to the, to the meetings. Great. Yeah, the, the main intention is that eventually we want this uh, organization to, to be uh, independent and on its own and has its own identity, if you will. So, uh, yeah, this, I think it's a, it's a good strategy to have Mr. Ponce as a, uh, appointed as a representative of uh, Mr. Cervantes as alternative. Very good. Are there any, any other questions? If not, it's been recommended by staff that we, uh, as discussed, appoint Armando Ponce as the representative and the alternate to be Javier Cervantes. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Be consider and approve the interlocal agreement between PSJA ISD and the City of San Juan, Texas, as it relates to the donation of two portable buildings to the city for the use <coughs> at the City of San Juan, Texas wetlands. Mr. Ponce. Yes, uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Commission. Uh, this is the uh, arrangement that uh, we had, had brought to you before uh, regarding the two portable buildings that PSJ is donating to the wetlands. Um, they've asked us uh, to propose an interlocal agreement. Uh, their their uh, board meeting is on, is on uh, Monday the 30th. And uh, Mr. Campos is, uh, well, I'm working with Mr. Renee Campos on uh, and getting their legal to obviously uh, 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 look at our and your local. I've been working with Mr. Va Mr. Vasquez um, and uh, to move forward with the project so they can uh, transport those uh, uh, portables on onto our site. We're ready to uh, hook them up with water. Is it water? Uh, water and electricity and are electricity. the utilities, yes. The, the restroom facilities will be the ones that we have on site? Those are the ones that we have on site, yes. Okay. All right. Are there any questions? Um, Council, uh, do you have any comments on uh, the interlocal? Uh, no, we, we prepared it together based on the information that we received from the school and the requirements of the park and rec director. So we proposed it, we gave it to the school district, so we're waiting to see if they have any comments. They haven't made any comments on it as of yet. Any other questions? Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state <coughs> aye. Aye. Motion aye. passes. Next item is C, re reconsider, amend, and approve the land lease agreement between PSJISD, the City of San Juan, Texas, related to the new Sorensen Elementary for the proposed community school park project. Mr. Ponce. Uh, yes, Mayor, we're, we're uh, bringing back this item that we had uh, brought to you uh, last meeting, and that is essentially I've uh, been working with Mr. Vasquez to uh, uh, 
uh, work out some of the details uh, with the ins regarding the insurance. Uh, we've been working uh, with the insurance, uh, trying to see what the, the, different, uh, the uh, difference of cost is going to be once that we incorporate the new park. If I may, Mr. Ponce? Of course. Uh, we've been working with the insurance company, TML's. Now, the question from this commission was, is there going to be an increase in the price for our insurance and at first, the answer was no. But in today, in finally getting all the issues to him and presenting to the TML um, individual, his name is Mr. Canales, we provided him with what the city was going to provide for this park. Uh, we gave him a list and how much it was going to cost. Based on the replacement cost of those items, the city is looking at an increase of approximately 1,030 contribution from the city. That's based on an annual basis. Right now, uh, the insurance will go out for uh, a new policy. I was looking for Ms. Gonzalez. It was in October of 2015. So if, as soon as this agreement is approved by the school district in this city, the, we would then present it to TML. They would tell us, okay, based on the fact that it is July, we will prorate that 1,030. That's what will happen for Sorensen Elementary, for the, for the park at that, at that uh, park, correct? Uh, yes, and that's, of course, pending grant approval once it's installed. Items that we presented to him were sidewalks, signage, the playground equipment, trash bins, landscaping, half the basketball court, and the, the benches at the park. And that's just, that is what caused the insurance to increase by 1,030. The most expensive item, I believe, was the um, was, was a playscape. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Correct. It was about $35,000. Yes, sir. Um, so so we we'd be able to fill in the blank at, thir at 1,300. Is that correct? Well. The, in, our contract does not have a blank for insurance, the, the price of insurance. So that's, that contract here is only for the, uh, the school, is that correct? The, this one contract is for the school, and okay. I did make some amendments, and I apologize, I printed it out, but my printer was doing it on legal size, and I couldn't make a copy quick enough. You have the old one on your, yes. on your package. At 7.01 and 7.02 are the important ones having to do with insurance, and what we did is we deleted um, under 7.1 property insurance, leasee shall at its own expense during the term of this lease keep, and we deleted all buildings, structures, and improvements on the lease premises. We deleted all buildings, structures, and improvements. That's what okay. we deleted right there. And it's, the lease premises will be as defined in Exhibit A. And that will be the landscape and the, uh, the playscape. We'll put this specifically <coughs> into the contract. And this was all worked out with the TML representative so that we made sure we covered what we needed to do, cover by this policy. Um, he also asked us to include um, uh, under, let's see, as we continue, it continues, I'm just going to read it, insured against loss or damage by fire or theft with extended coverage to include loss by hail, explosion, riot, or riot attending to a strike, civil commotion, vandalism, and he added, he added vandalism or malicious mischief, and then he, and then it continues to aircraft vehicles, and he said, please add sudden and accidental damage due to smoke and sprinkler link leakage. So that's what he added after discussing it with him. And then it goes on to read, in, in aggregate amounts of not less than the estimated replacement cost value. And he asked us to put that in there, replacement, the estimate replacement value. Uh, we then struck out the, the following sentence. Uh, Lease shall also maintain adequate insurance on fixtures, equipment, merchandise, and inventory on the lease premises in the same or separate insurance policy in an amount equal to the full fair insurable value of same, whichever is greater. We struck out that entire sentence based on the meeting we had with that insurance broker. Um, and then we added uh, to the next sentence, it says the insurance is to be carried by one or more insurance companies licensed to do business in Texas or a risk pool because the city has is in a risk pool. So we added the, the term risk pool. Um, that is the, the only, these are the only changes we made to this contract, to this lease contract. And I guess, um, I know there was concern with increase in, in the, the insurance amount. Um, right now, it's still considered a draft. They need this for their grant, correct? Correct, yes. So what I would like to do is, if we can amend it as discussed tonight, submit it with our grant, and with the of course, go to the district, PSJ, ISD, come back, submit it to the grant, and then once it's all finalized, we'll br bring it back to the city commission again. So that you can see for the, the final, final product. Final, yes. yes. That he needs okay. at least a draft for his grant. Correct. Okay. Yes. Very good. <clears throat> but the draft will include the changes you discussed yes, sir. right now. 
Yeah. And the grant deadline is still the 31st? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I won't be signing anything until it's come back in the final version. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Very good. Then uh, if there are no other questions, there is a motion for approval as presented and as advised by council. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Item D, consider and amend approval of the land lease agreement between PSGISD and the City of San Juan, Texas, related to leasing San Juan Mayfield Park's third field. Mr. Ponce. Uh, this is uh, something that I've been working again with Mr. Vasquez uh, with, with the agreement. Uh, we have to uh, cover uh, the uh, items that, uh, that are already in place, the structures are in place, which includes uh, the, the current fence, uh, the bleachers, uh, the, 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 covered, uh, uh, the covered awnings that we have, uh, the uh, and the lights that we're installing as well. So there are some changes, uh, and I'll, again, maybe Mr. Bosco, if you can kind of just elaborate a little bit on. And, and uh, Mayor and Commissioners, the changes again were identical to the uh, the agreement we just discussed for Sorensen on Mayfield. It's 7.01 and 702. The, the changes were identical. Uh, we added the risk pool, the sudden accidental damage due to smoke and sprinkler leakage. Um, so it's the same same changes. The only other change I made on this contract is under 1.01, .01, where it indicates the commencement of this contract will begin, uh, as opposed to the improvements to be constructed. What I added it or what I amended it to include would be the month after the party signed this agreement, because we're really not going <coughs> to be constructing anything on this on this contract. And also to inform this commission, the insurance will increase for for this contract based <coughs> on. The fact that we have a we have a fence there, we have the dugouts, yes. we have the canopy, the Canic bleachers, canopy, yes. and it, it will increase by two hundred and seventy-five dollars. The city's contribution will increase, and again, it'll also be prorated once we inform the insurance company or the risk pool that we now are the the tenants of this property. And it, yes, I'm sorry, yes. and that's what's actually causing the, the price increase. It's the lights and the fence. Yes, that's what's causing the, the increase. Mayor, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner if, if I may, also uh, I want to take this opportunity that uh, we are looking uh, to, uh, today, uh, with, I took a tour with Mr. Ponce, and uh, we are making a greater commitment to the Parks uh, Recreation Department uh, and our, all, of, all of our parks, talking about the Mayfield Park, Acauta Park, Dominic Park, Third City Park, uh, Miguel Hidalgo Park, uh, our municipal park, and uh, a great commitment as to the maintenance of the parks, the accessibility of the parks, the lighting of the parks, uh, making sure that uh, uh, people enjoy coming to our parks. Uh, and uh, so we have, we have made a stronger commitment with, with our, our, our maintenance department, and Mr. Ponce has made a strong commitment to our citizens to make sure that uh, we want them to use the parks. And uh, uh, we, we have a lot of use for the parks, and I think that uh, this is just a great example of, uh, of, of us trying to uh, have a good parks program, a master plan that uh, we, uh, we implemented, but I think that it also uh, requires a lot of maintenance and so forth, so uh, we are in the process of doing that. I know that some citizens have called asking about the accessibility of parks, the lighting in parks, uh, some park needs to maintenance, so we are, we are making a strong com stronger commitment to that as well. Mr. Ponce. Yes, we're going to continue to work, as the chief mentioned. We're going to add, also add additional signage and really just trying to beautify the parks and to, again, make them uh, more, as he said, more accessible. And uh, we, we're going to try to feature our parks. We're going to be working with uh, Mr. Baca and with uh, his staff to try to do some short videos and making, making our citizens aware of the, of the parks that we do have in place. Uh, I'll give you an example like Memorial Park to kind of uh, to showcase that and that it's accessible but for our citizens to use. And of course, you know, to make them uh, represent the, the, to have them as a showcase for the city, you know, to the type of services that we offer. Let me ask you, Mr. Ponce, uh, did you ever look into uh, any type of grants as far as for the lighting at the municipal park? Yeah, yes, we have, and actually, uh, the uh, grant for the lighting, you know, obviously, is very competitive, and it's a very large grants. I know Major League Baseball does some grants. Uh, but there's a significant in-kind match. And, that, and that's, that's what really we have the problems we have with those grants is that the match is very significant. They're talking about, about $236,000 for the lights. 
So we would have to come up with that, you know, 50 percent. Uh, we're still looking at some options. We're, we're trying to find a way that we could uh, do some possible funding. What happened to the lights that were there before? I know that they took them down, right, because the poles were bending. Were they any good or anything? You know? They were still functional. Um, I've, um, fortunately, I can't answer uh, why they weren't, well, what, what was made of them. I know they're, they're actually in our Hall Acres uh, office. They're in the back. The lights are there. Um, so I don't believe they're of use anymore. Uh, but from the, from the condition that I've seen, I went and I looked at them. Uh, they're, they're no longer functional. Yeah. Is there a, any other questions? If not, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Uh, Mayor, if I just, uh, uh, um, as long as we can include, uh, if uh, Commissioner Ramirez is <coughs> amenable, uh, the changes <coughs> that were discussed uh, by legal counsel. <coughs> <coughs> Second. Okay, then just discussion. What, what changes the the ones that we did on With the other the, contract? The other contract and the and one the yes, the and commencement, the commencement, of the which I think is very important. And the commencement of yeah under 101 there. So you're, okay. you're amending. Yes. Amending. Yep. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, state aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Ponce. <coughs> Under item E, consider entering into interlocal cooperation agreement between the City of San Juan Hidalgo and Hidalgo County to provide efficient and effective free library services to county residents. Ms. Sesson? Good afternoon, Good Mayor, afternoon. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. Uh, this is a yearly agreement between the City and Hidalgo County. Uh, the amount uh, that they're going to give us is $14,513.61. It's uh, so $100 more by going on the cloud. So last year we got like 15400 so it's just. But it's a yearly agreement. Everything is the, the same except the date changes. Very good. Uh, are there any questions? If not, is there a motion for approval as presented? <coughs> is there a second? second? All in favor state aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Thank Thank you. you. Item F, consider authorizing Envire Lights. LLC to perform a lighting audit for the city of San Juan, Texas. Uh, Chief Gonzalez. Yes, Mayor Commission. Uh, Enviro Light Solutions came and did a presentation on their uh, services. So uh, we're asking that uh, for them to do a no cost, uh, uh, an analysis at no cost to the city of San Juan so we can uh, know where we're at and uh, with this uh, energy consumption uh, project. And there are no, no obligations, correct? That is correct. Are there any questions? Uh, the only thing <clears throat> that I just wanted to comment, and, and I know that there's uh, a couple of representatives here uh, as well, um, is uh, will this uh, uh, report be uh, provided to us uh, in writing or digitally? Because I really think it's something that we want to share with everyone. Mayor Pro Tem. State your name Mason. for the record. I'm here with EnviroLite. Yes, once we do the whole analysis, we'll do an audit, then we'll do analysis, then we'll come in front of you and present you the whole analysis. So we'll show you all the cost savings that you had. And I just heard about talking about the parks and the lighting. We'll hope to work and help you guys out in that area. We did the city of Hidalgo, and you can go out there and take a look at the city parks. And we're just finishing up uh, the city of Pafurias. And now we're working with the city of Edinburgh on, on working on their light efficiency. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Is there a motion for So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, state aye. 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 Motion passes. Item G, consider ratifying the San Juan Economic Development Corporation's projects and amended <coughs> annual budget, fiscal year 2014-2015. Mr. Tapia. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners. Uh, we have our Aztec project uh, that is underway already in, in the construction. Uh, we're going to propose the $40,000 for sewer utilities, which will be coming out of our bond money. Uh, right now, currently, we have $114,216.96, and by using $40,000, it will still leave us a balance of $74,216.96. It's coming, again, I'm sorry, you, it's coming up from your line item that says un, uh, just in general projects, unspecified. No, we no? actually, when we brought we, it in. We actually brought it up, and we put a copy of the budget. We added I'm looking bond, at that. The bond revenue. Under where? The bottom, it's the bond revenue. The remaining revenue. bond revenue. <coughs> and it's 40000 that you're asking mm -hmm. to be. And the amount that you put for the bond revenue, is that the, the amount that's going to be left over, or is that the amount that you're starting with? 
The total bond revenue on the very top, the 114,000, that's what we have right now. Without the 40. Without okay. the 40,000. Mm -hmm. After the 40,000, if you look at the bottom, I put the balance down, mm -hmm. 74,116 okay. And I saw the dates that you had um, uh, stated here, the March 5th deadline and a February 2nd deadline. Those were the ones that they've, they've already gone passed and so was that when you were advertising for this no first what we did was we went ahead and uh, put the february the second you did yes, <coughs> the public hearings okay and those are the dates when we can actually start working on it after the 60 day waiting period that we have to wait okay mm -hmm. and then the the march 5th was the actual specific guest to aztec is that correct yes okay all right are there any other questions <coughs> if not is there a motion for approval so move is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank Mayor, you. If I, if I just, one last question. <clears throat> Do they have a projected time of completion <coughs> um, for the project? Or, you know, so I saw them moving around yeah, the, real I mean, fast. We don't know yet. <laughs> they, haven't they haven't provided anything. Yet. That's great. They haven't, they haven't disclosed yet. They haven't yeah, disclosed once disclosed they disclose. Promises, right. So they have not given us a <coughs> Well, what, when they do, and we'd love to hear it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, no, they actually want to come before you all announce it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the next item, H, consider an approval corresp correspondence from the City of San Juan, Texas, to Hidalgo County Commission related to the TERS, authorizing the mayor to affix her signature and aforementioned correspondence and submit the aforementioned, aforementioned correspondence to the Hidalgo County Commission. Um, this is, needs to be... Yeah. Removed from table. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Um, <clears throat> the council? Were you going to talk on this? Uh, Mayor, uh, actually. Sorry, I didn't see Mr. Cervantes. Mr. Cervantes? Yes. If you remember at the last city commission meeting, you had asked for a list of projects yes. that have uh, developed within those this four zones yes. that we're asking for 100% uh, participation from the county. So uh, we, we, there's a list in your packet that lists the projects that have developed or are potentially developing within the four zones. So the, the idea is to attach it to the letter and then include the maps and then send it to the county judge. Um, Very good. And I think that that'll at least open up the door for us to begin discussing how we're going to, whether we get the 100 or how to approach on these. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it gets the ball moving again uh, to meet with the county and, and come up with something to get the uh, the terms uh, set up with uh, we need to <coughs> we need to have it set up very good and then I, I just wanted to ask on the zone four uh, for the manufacturing operations and schools do we have does that include the one that's already been approved for for developing is that why we're picking yes that we have uh, if, if you remember there was some Sony yes. for a, for a factory but uh, there's there's still some uh, infrastructure issues uh, okay. with that project. Uh, we're hoping those get settled and that project will, will happen. Um, but we're, we're, we're doing everything we can to make the project happen. Mm -hmm. And they already own the property, so that, right. that helps. Very good. Are there any questions? If not a motion for approval. So moved. Move by Mayor, uh, <coughs> Commissioner Garza, and yes. who? Second. OK, Commissioner. <laughs> Uh, Ramirez second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Motion passes. Item I, thank you very much. Consider resolution authorizing the city of San Juan to submit an application for funding the Texas Parks and Wildlife Local Park Grant Program for the development of the Sorensen Project, a park project. Ms. Borrego. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Good evening. In 2010, the city of San Juan funded the update of their Parks and Recreation Master Plan, which contains a recommendation section based on both public input and a need assessment the development of a San Juan park system. The plan lists the exploration of joint use parks in conjunction with the Bar San Juan Alamo Independent School District as a top priority. According to the master plan, by creating joint use parks, the city and school can facilitate each other in the development and maintenance of recreational property and extend the hours of park operation for a community. This recommend recommendation has led the city of San Juan and PSGISD to develop the Sorensen Park project. Sorensen Park will occupy 1.48 acres of land that is located on the corner of Stewart Road and San Houston Avenue a 10-minute walking distance from Soroton Elementary, Austin Middle School, Lucetta Estates, and Ridge Heights. The park has access points on both the north and west side and will have shared use parking with Soroton Elementary to the south side of the property. Their park will be utilized by the elementary during school hours and will be open to the public in the evenings. If granted, funds from the local park grant will be used to purchase a playscape, various exercise stations, and materials for a walking trail. 
In order to meet the 50% match requested by the application, the City of San Juan will build the trail and install the requested equipment through in-house labor. PSJ will, offer, will also offer in-kind match by providing student volunteers to cultivate native landscaping, weld additional exercise stations, and create interpretive signage for the park. This resolution is to allow us to submit the application asking for funds to support this project. The one that's come before us and we had ex dis extensive discussion, right? Yes. Okay. Someone wants to be able to approve the, the, <coughs> the lease agreement. Interlocal, or the lease agreement, rather. Very good. Is Motion there, to approve. Is there a second? <coughs> second. All in favor state aye. 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 Motion passes, and thank you for all the work that you all have been putting into this. I know it's, it's been a big task. I appreciate you getting it done on time. Ms. Ferreira, do we have uh, an idea of when um, they'll have a response? <coughs> for this grant? Yes. Um, we submitted in March. A response should be sometime in December. Great. And then after that date, about three months, is just paperwork submitted back and forth. Thank, thank you. you. Under the current agenda, approval of minutes for March 10th, 2015, and monthly collection report February 28th, 2015. Any items need to be pulled from the agenda? If not, is there a motion for approval? Motion to approve as presented. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Motion passes. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem, second by? Second. Uh, Commissioner Ramirez, all in favor state aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned at 7.07. <laughs>